Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nico, the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm bringing you guys Week 11 tight end start or sit decisions for fantasy football in 2020. Inside of this video, I'm going to be going over every single matchup from Thursday Night Football all the way to Monday Night Football and tell you whether you should start or sit the tight ends at each and every single matchup for this week. Now, before we get into it, I'd like to ask that if at any point inside of this video that you guys end up enjoying, to please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win that 2020 Fantasy Football Championship. And real quick, before we get into it, I'd like to give you guys a quick word from my friends and my sponsor over at OverlayDFS.com. OverlayDFS.com offers two games on their website, the Progressive and BRW tournaments, as well as the Matchup Shop. Personally, I think the Matchup Shop is the way to go, but obviously I play on both sides of the website, but I'd like you guys to listen real quick about the Matchup Shop. Now, the Matchup Shop is as simple as it gets. Who scores more fantasy points in a player versus player matchup? Dalvin Cook, minus three points, or Kirk Cousins, plus three fantasy football points. It is that simple. You just pick one out of these guys. You could pick all of them and parlay them together or you can pick all of them and not parlay them together you can put as much money as you want you can play as much as you want or as little as you want you want to just bet 50 cents on it go ahead and slowly accumulate some cash make sure you guys check it out overlaydfs.com it's super easy you guys do all this research every single week to win your fantasy league so why not win some extra cash on top of it on overlaydfs.com and we are back. Let's get right into it. Week 11 tight end start or sit decisions. We begin with Thursday night football, the Arizona Cardinals at the Seattle Seahawks. Now, while this will be one of the premier matchups of the week and one of the more interesting games to see how it unfolds between two teams that look very, very, very good in the NFC. But at the end of the day, neither of these teams have really any tight ends that are start worthy at all. Dan Arnold, the Arnold Dineta for the Arizona Cardinals just has not shown enough every single week to be worthy of a start. He just doesn't get targeted all that much considering they have big man D-Hop over there. For the Seattle Seahawks, Greg Olson and Jacob Hollister just are not consistent enough with Greg Olson there. Hollister gets hurt with Hollister there. Olsen gets hurt because they kind of eat into each other's workload on a weekly basis. So I'm just going to go ahead and stay away from every single tight end in this matchup. Next game here, we got the Sunday slate of games, the Cincinnati Bengals at the Washington football team. And I'm going to be starting up Logan Thomas in this matchup. Logan Thomas has been far from great thus far this season, but what I have seen from him is a very talented player who gets a decent amount of targets from Alex Smith on a weekly basis. And while he's not an upper echelon start at the tight end position, if you're kind of wandering down there looking, hey, who's a guy I might be able to pick up off the waiver wire and I can play? Or hey, maybe who's a guy that I need for a bye week fill in? Logan Thomas will be your answer. The Bengals defense is soft serve fucking ice cream up against every single position. I think Logan Thomas is in for a big game here, considering Alex Smith has been feeding him like his his name was Ezekiel Elliott for the Bengals. I'm going to be sitting down Drew Sample strictly because there's just too many cooks in the kitchen in Cincinnati. A.J. Green, while isn't really, really that good, he takes away targets. Higgins and Boyd are target monsters for this team. So Drew Sample, there's just not enough uh, targets to go to his way to be worthy of a start in fantasy football. Next matchup here, we got the Atlanta Falcons at the New Orleans Saints. And in this matchup, I like both tight ends. Now, Hayden Hurst was on a bye last week, but Hayden Hurst has looked like one of the most consistent tight ends thus far this season. Typically, I did call for him to be a top five start, but he kind of just maneuvered his way up there due to injuries at the rest of the tight end position. But that's okay with me because I said he'd be a top five guy and it looks like he is going to be as long as he can stay healthy for the rest of the season. Hayden Hurst is one of those players that really hurts to have at the beginning beginning of the game. The first two quarters of the game, typically Hayden Hurst does diddly squat, but in the third and fourth quarter of the game, Hayden Hurst arises like my cock in the morning, and he's going to be ready to fire out some bombs up against the New Orleans Saints. I love Hayden Hurst this week, even up against a tougher Saints defense. For Jared Cook, this one is going to be a trial game. Does the Winston Anata, the W eater, the famous Jameis Winston, throw the ball to Jared Cook? My guess is as good as yours. We saw a year, not last year, the year before, he was feeding the tight end Cameron Bray. He was feeding the other tight end that is over there in O.J. Howard. Last year, didn't feed them at all. So we really have no idea what to think of Famous Jameis and Jared Cook. But I'm going to go ahead and fire him up here, strictly based on the Simpleton matchup up against the Atlanta Falcons defense. Next game here, we got the Steelers at the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Eric Ebron has been super duper consistent as of recently. Early on in the season, Ben Barathesberger did not look Eric Ebron's way at all. It was like Eric Ebron was Medusa, and if you, he looked his way, he would turn to fucking stone because he wasn't throwing it to Ebron at all. And then as of recently, the last couple of weeks, Eric Ebron has been scoring touchdowns. He's been heavily utilized 
in this offense and up such against such an easy matchup in the Jacksonville Jaguars, I will be firing up Eric Ebron this week as a start for the tight end position for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tyler Eifert just has not been that guy he was four years ago in a Cincinnati Bengals uniform with Andy, the Ginger Ninja, Dalton. So I'm going to go ahead and sit down Tyler Lockett, or not Tyler Lockett, Tyler Higby. This is a not even Tyler Higby, Tyler Eifert, I apologize, this is just a very tough matchup for the tight end position, and even if Eifert was good, it may be scary to start a, t a tight end up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Next matchup here, we got the New England Deflatriots at the Houston Texans. I'm going to be sitting down Jordan Aikens as well as Darren Fells for the Houston Texans. When these both, both of these guys are healthy, they are a parasite to each other. Atkins might score, Fells might score, or none of them may score. It's because they're eating into each other's work. So whereas last year we kind of saw Aikens and Fells have a battle, and then one of them emerged later in the season. This year we've just seen them battling all year, and when each other are when each of them are healthy, it seems like it's just a complete and utter guess which one will do good, and a majority of the games neither of them end up being successful at all at all for fantasy football for the Patriots Ryan Izzo is not going to be a start for me he just frankly is not used enough the Patriots have a smorgasbord of tight ends and Ryan Izzo is the lone survivor in that tight end room I mean like he drafted a million of them and only one of them survived in Ryan Izzo because all the other ones got hurt next matchup here we got the Philadelphia Eagles at the Cleveland Browns and this is a matchup that kind of scares me for Dallas Goder. now it appears that Zach Ertz is going to be returning in this game but coming off an injury, being hurt for so long, I don't feel like starting him week one up against the Browns would be ideal. Plus, when you go and think back, what has Zach Ertz done this season? Nothing. He was a guy that I was really, really hammering the train, hammering the fucking gavel or whatever that thing's called that they use in court. I was hammering that saying, get rid of, J get rid of Zach Ertz. Get rid of him before he bends you over the table and does you raw dog. And that's simply what he is going to do if you start firing him up. I really do not trust him at all. Dallas Goder doesn't seem to be trustworthy at all. But again, the tight end core this season is so, so slim. Unless you got one of those top five guys, you're taking a gamble with a guy like Dallas Godert, who has a lot of upside because Carson Wentz likes to throw him the ball. We just haven't seen it really as of recently after he came back from the injury. For the Browns, Austin Hooper comes back, and you think this is a cupcake matchup last week up against the Houston Texans. Well, it turned out the weather said, no, 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 Dikembe, no, 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 not today, motherfucker, because that game was just a run galore for both teams, especially the Cleveland Browns. So when the game is so windy like that and they're not throwing the ball, obviously Austin Hooper is not going to see a ass load of touches in this matchup up against the Philadelphia Eagles. I think we see a solid game out of Austin Hooper. I'm not calling for him to be like a top five guy, but certainly top 12 this week in my opinion. Next matchup here, we got the Detroit Lions at the Carolina Panthers. And in this one, I like TJ Hawkinson. Now TJ, uh, TJ Hawkinson last week completely sucked ass. He had a good matchup up against the Washington football team and simply just did not perform. Now, this start is completely tentative on the fact that Matthew Stafford ends up suiting up. He hurt one of his fingers on the motherfucker's throwing hand, which isn't good. That is very, very bad. You'd prefer if it was on the other hand. So with that said, if he ends up suiting up, I'm playing TJ Hawkinson. Hawkinson had one down game. He has been up, up, up to the goddamn moon as of recently playing in these games besides last week. So I feel very confident in him here, especially in a matchup that I think could be relatively high scoring up against the Carolina Panthers. For the Panthers, Ian Thomas is a guy that, in my opinion, is a good prospect and does have the potential to be a good tight end in the NFL someday. But that day is not today, motherfucker. Sit down, Mr. Ian Thomas up against the Detroit Lions. Next matchup here, we got the rematch from last Last year, the Tennessee Titans at the Baltimore Ravens from the playoffs last year. If you guys have ended up enjoying this video thus far, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you are new. And if you're not new, please make sure to hit that like button. Back to it, Titans at Ravens. I like Mark Andrews in this matchup. Who would have guessed? Andrews was one of those guys that I really heavily touted going into the year as one of those tight ends that was going to continue his success from last season. And frankly, that has not been true. And it's not really even his fault. It's been the fact that Lamar Jackson looks like Stevie Wonder in the fucking pocket. He does not see Mark Andrews when he's wide open. Now, Nick Boyle suffers a season-ending injury, I think that was last week or the week before, which is going to open up the room a lot for Mark Andrews to see the field a lot more, as well as, in my opinion, see him more targets. So I think Mark Andrews is going to eat in this game. We saw him look very good last week up against the New England Deflatriates in that rain game. So I think the Baltimore Ravens have a big spot here 
they're up against the Tennessee Titans that they need to win. The Titans absolutely bent them over and smacked them a couple of times in the ass last year until they called mercy. And the Ravens and Marky Mark Andrews are going to be humming in this matchup. I love Andrews. I'm going to be starting Janu Smith as well. Janu Smith hasn't been all that great as of recently, but I feel like he is going to have that game where he has that big bounce back matchup here up against the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I don't feel like it's going to be a humongous game where he scores like 25 fucking points or something crazy, but I do think it's in his wheelhouse to be a top 12 tight end this week up against the Ravens, and it's very hard to sit guys like Janu Smith when the other options that are on the waiver wire are complete and utter dog shit at this point in the season because there really hasn't been that many breakout tight ends this season. Next matchup here, we got the New York football. Football Jumbo Jets at the Los Angeles Chargers. And in this one, I like Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry ended up scoring a touchdown late in that game last week up against the Miami Dolphins. Hunter Henry has looked pretty solid this season. He hasn't really had those boom games where he completely wins you your matchup, scores like a touchdown or two. And does good for you. But he hasn't had any of those matchups either where he just completely screws you over, grabs you through your screen, and gives you the nice old chokehold. I don't think he's done that either. Hunter Henry has been just about all right this matchup up against the New York Football Jets as, as easy as it comes. The Jets defense cannot stop anyone. And Hunter Henry, big man Hunter, is going to have a big game this week up against that Jets defense. For the Jets, they have Chris Herndon, which is probably one of the biggest wastes of talent I've ever seen. Chris Herndon is one of the most athletic tight ends in the NFL. And this guy does not get any use at all. It's like he fucked Adam Gaze's wife or something. That is how I feel about it because Chris Herndon is so, so good, but Adam Gaze has done him so, so dirty. So let's hope when Gaze, fi Gaze gets fired next year, when they bring in Trevor Lawrence, that Trevor Lawrence uses that sick hair of his and his brain to think, hey, let me throw the ball to Chris fucking Herndon. Next matchup here, we got my Miami Dolphins at the Denver Broncos, and I like both tight ends in this game. Noah Fant has been very, 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 very safe thus far this season. After the injury of Cortland Sutton early in the season in that game, I believe it was up against the Tennessee Titans. Noah Fant has looked very good. He came off of an injury a couple weeks ago and has continued to look good. This matchup up against the Dolphins is nothing to laugh about. The Dolphins' defense has legitimately looked like a top five or top three defense in the NFL, but I think Horsecock Drew Locke feeds it to Mr. Noah Fant enough times for him to be worthy of a start in fantasy football this week. And even if it isn't Drew Locke, it might be Brett gripping it and ripping it, but I still would like Fant in this matchup. For the Dolphins, I like Mike Gosicki, but it just seems like he's been cucked by Adam Shaheen and friends in Miami. It's like Tua is like Oprah. You get a touchdown. You get a touchdown. You all get a touchdown except for Mike Gesicki. He's not the one getting a touchdown, but he has been getting targeted by Tua Tungavailoa. The Broncos defense is hot donkey shit. So I think that Mike Kosicki will be able to get it done in this matchup and be worthy of a start. Next matchup here, the glorious matchup of the Dallas Cowboys at the Minnesota Vikings. And call me crazy, but I almost want to start Kyle Rudolph if Irv Smith comes back. But I feel like Irv Smith is going to come back one week too early playing this game and then put Kyle Rudolph in the goddamn dirt. Rudolph had his first drop since like 2018 last week. What a stat that is. A guy hasn't dropped the ball in two years. It's something insane like that. Absolutely crazy. Rudolph has looked pretty all right this season. Irv Smith looked very good up until that injury. So I think if Irv Smith comes back, not this week, but next week, I'll be willing to fire him up as a tight end. For the Cowboys, Dalton Schultz, and ooh, the Andy Dalton to Dalton Schultz connection is coming back this week, but I don't think it's going to be good enough considering the Vikings defense went from looking like one of the worst units in the NFL to saying for, to the defense telling other people to suck their unit because they look very good. Dalton Schultz is going to be a sit for me this week. Next matchup here, we got the Green Bay Packers at the Indianapolis Colts. And in this one, I like Robert Tanyan. Now, Robert Tanyan, just like Mike Gesicki, has been getting absolutely raw dogged by the other tight ends on the team. Randomly, all these motherfuckers are just showing up to score a touchdown and screw him over. I think Robert Tanyan will be fine. I don't see a supreme upside matchup here. Just one of those guys that you feel all right about playing. That isn't going to completely screw you over. Considering the Colts' defense does look pretty strong up against the tight end position. For the Colts, Trey Boo Boo, Trey Burton, as well as Mo Ali Cox, Mo Money Mo Cox are going to be sits for me in this matchup. I feel like when there's multiple tight ends active in this roster, you really have no idea which one is going to be getting the targets. And it may be none of them, but it's probably going to be both of them considering Philip Rivers loves that tight end. There's a reason why he has 11 goddamn kids. Next matchup here, we got the Chiefs at the Las Vegas Raiders. This Sunday night football matchup is actually a very much a good one. At the beginning of the year, if you were to read the schedule and you're like, week 11, 
Chiefs at Raiders. This one is going to be a murder by the hands of Pat Mahomes and friends. But at the end of the day, this one is going to look like a closer matchup. The Raiders offense looks like no joke, and the defense looks pretty all right as well. In this matchup, though, for the tight end positions, you have the two premier tight ends right now who are healthy, Travis Kelsey as well as Darren Waller. Darren Waller has looked very good thus far this season, just like he did look last season. Not super surprising. Kansas City Chiefs tight end, Travis Kelsey, has looked very, very, very good as well and is probably the number one tight end in the NFL right now and easily is because George Kittle is hurt. So with that said, these are two defenses that will allow points to the tight end position. So you're going to start both the tight ends that you drafted super early and then have a whole lot of upside in this game. Travis Kelsey as well as Darren Waller. And final matchup of the week, we got Monday Night Football Rams at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I like Rob Gronkowski in this matchup. Last week, Rob Gronkowski got his swagger back after they got absolutely butt-fucked by the New Orleans Saints the week prior on Monday Night Football as well. Or maybe that was Sunday Night Football. Either way, Gronk looked like shit in that game. The whole team looked like shit. And then last week, the team had a bounce back. They took an L last night, but to not have bounced back, Rob Gronkowski in for a good spot here up against the Rams. Now, the Rams' defense is no joke, but Gronk does get fed in the red zone, which will typically grant him a touchdown, which will typically make him a great option to be starting in your fantasy lineup for the Rams. Tyler Higby, the dream is dead for this guy. Now, if you're in a pickle... There's a lot of guys that are worse than Tyler Higby, but with Everett there now healthy, it just seems like a complete and utter shit So, so I'm going to be setting Tyler Higby as well as Gerald, at Gerald Everett this matchup up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tampa Bay Tom Brady. So let me know what you guys think about the tight ends this week. Let me know if you guys ended up enjoying down below in the comment section. I love each and every single one of you motherfuckers. Make sure you guys check out overlaydfs.com. Have a great rest of your guys' day. Stay safe. I love you all. Kaboy!